Today on Pat's Car Garage, if you have a Jeep Grand Cherokee ZJ with a 4 liter engine and you're wondering if I can fit a bigger alternator, well here it is. I just changed mine because well the bearings on my alternator were completely done and obviously like why put in another 90 amp alternator if I can upgrade. So this here is a uh, 136 amp alternator from the 5.2 liter V8 Grand Cherokee. It's a brand new unit. It's not a rebuilt, but basically it fits in with very little modification. There's tons of room around the bracket for uh, for it to fit. You could even fit a you could even fit a much larger alternator, like 160 amp. If you can find one, would probably fit. Uh, but at least 136 fits right in, no modifications. Uh, as you can see, it, the 136 amp alternator uses a 7 groove pulley, but the 4 liter only has a 6 groove pulley. But you know, you can just run the belt uh, on the first 6 grooves and no need to fill that last one in, so that's not a problem. The only thing you have to actually modify uh, is the rear, the rear lug that connects the 12 volt. Uh, it's pointing the wrong direction, so you can either remove it from your 90 amp and swap it over, or as you can tell, I haven't upgraded the wiring kit. So what I did, I actually just like chopped mine off because with the larger gauge wiring, it wouldn't have fit anyway. Yeah, that's what you. That's all you have to do to get the alternator to fit. With that being said, I don't recommend running the stock wiring because it's only good for 90 amps. So in the stock wiring. You have two fuses underneath your fuse box, uh, which the alternator feeds power uh, down up in this uh, loom and it goes underneath into the fuse box. And then you have two fuses. Uh, I pulled mine out. See, there's one that's supposed to be here, right here, between these two pins, and another one right here. It used to have two 60 amp fuses in parallel, so essentially a 120 amp fuse. Uh, but again, you know, 120 amps, that's not enough if you're running a 136 amp alternator. So what I did was actually, I removed the stock wiring completely when I replaced my wiring with a aftermarket kit. Uh, now instead there is a main fuse. It's kind of hidden uh, next to the battery. You can't really see it. Maybe I can try to... Yeah, see right there. It's kind of tucked underneath the alternator because that's just how the wiring fit. Uh, but yeah... You can also tell that you're in Canada because everything's a little bit salty now. But basically, yeah, you definitely should upgrade the wiring if you're going to run a larger alternator. And this is going to help, of course, uh, you know, running all your accessories better. You know, if you're planning on putting a winch or something. And it frees up two uh, slots in your fuse box. If you want to put in some, you know, aftermarket lighting or whatever, you now have two free slots here for these big fuses. So that's basically it. You don't... There isn't really anything difficult about this. There's no like you don't have to like cut the bracket or grind the bracket or anything like you would on an XJ. The ZJ fits right in, and you could even fit a 160 amp alternator in there. But they're harder to find and way more expensive. These only cost like twenty dollars more than a 90 amp, so it's a worthwhile upgrade. Now for the wiring kit, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a a second video reviewing them, but it's actually quite excellent. I'm very very happy with uh, this wiring kit. It's very well made it deserves its own review and i'm also going to go over the um the difference in the wiring between the two in that video but yeah suffice to say that uh, this is a really simple upgrade if your alternator is about to die uh you know take the time to upgrade it